the first thing I do with my paintings is I scan everything and then I make them into photographs. Now sometimes the photographs are full size and if you want to do a magnet, if you do um, like the pocket size photographs or if you make them into quarters, that's the easiest way to go. But those cost a dollar. I try to do mine myself by I'm doing in a word program and I would line them all up so they're basically you know the same size and I'll transfer them into a photograph using the paint program and then I'll make a JPEG of it and I will send this to Walgreens to get a photograph made. This one costs between 10 and 33 cents depending on how many you order. I often order a lot to get the cheapest price I can and this way you can put a combination on. I have learned over the years how to get a, get them on there. So I'll just kind of go through the process of how I make my magnets. So once I get my photograph back, I have my handy dandy little guillotine cutter here. I've had this for years. I got it from Creative Memories, oh boy, probably about 10 years ago, 15 years ago by now. And I just, I just cut my photograph to be the appropriate size for the magnet. So I'm going to line it up and cut it out and I'm going to use this one right here for my magnet. So I'm going to cut off the bird. The bird isn't really the right size for the magnet. It might be used later in the magnet but it's not really the right size for this one. Okay so I have my photograph ready for my magnet and the magnets I order, I just order them off of Amazon. Um, they're the size of business cards. And they already have the sticky part on, so you just peel this backing off, and underneath it's sticky. And here's the magnet on the other side. They usually curl just slightly, so if you lie them flat or put a book over them, they will flatten out. They are always not the same size as my photograph, so I always have to trim them down. I could make my photograph the same size as the magnet, but then, you know, I would get less out of one sheet. So I just choose to do it this way. So I will take the sticky part off or peel off the paper so the sticky part is revealed and I do my best to line it up. And as you can tell part of the magnet is over the side. If you look at the back you know, it's not lined up perfectly. So that's when I bring my handy dandy little cutter back in. And this cutter is amazing because it works really well. Had it for, like I said, for years and years and years. So I then just trim off the excess magnet or the excess photo or often both. And the cutter has grid lines on it. So that makes it so you can line it up to make sure everything is straight. 90 degree angles and if you do it fast you know it works better than if you do it slow. I am doing this on my desk on top of a canvas and a book um, that is just stabilizing everything otherwise I would I would just do this sitting in front of the couch or in front of the TV sometimes. You know, that's kind of crooked there but that's the basic way of how I make my magnets. Now I do sell these at J&J Craftworks for $2.50 a magnet and I can sell them on my website right now. I don't have any on my website. I need to take pictures of them but any of my watercolor paintings can easily be made into magnets. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and have a nice day and give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much.